Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about my data binder. Um, if you don't know, I am an early childhood special education teacher. I have students that are between the ages of two and five years old. Um, developmentally, they are a lot younger than their chronological age, but I just wanted to take you through my data binder just to show you what I keep in here um, and some useful information if you are a special education teacher. Um, these are sticky notes. I'm going to go over these last. But the first thing I have, of course, is a binder. Um, in the first pocket, I have gold progress sheets. Um, and this is what most special education teachers in my city use. And of course, you know, you can modify this any way that you want. I have blank paper, and this is for uh, primarily for fine motor data whether that be color cutting, tracing, um, anything of that nature. Then in here I have more squares and these are double-sided. Um, and this is once again, if I need to collect fine motor data. And I just go ahead and keep this right in these pockets because it's easier for me just to grab this entire thing than try to find paper. All right, then on this side, sorry if there's a glare from the sheet protector, um, I just have my data binder and what I keep in here is um, student and parent contact information, all my communication logs when I speak with their related service providers, such as a speech therapist, occupational therapist, or physical therapist. I also keep all of their IEP goals in here. I keep their service pages so I know how many minutes of each service they are supposed to receive. I keep all of their data sheets for their IEP goals. That way, if I'm at an IEP meeting and a parent may have a question about a specific goal, I can just take this entire binder with me to the meeting, um, and I'm not going through a filing cabinet or digging through a drawer to try to find that data. I also have, of course, my due dates for my IEPs as well as a birthday list. Since I do have students that will be transitioning to kindergarten the following year, I need to make sure that those students are flagged so we can have their transitional meetings in the spring. Um, of course, I have my portfolio list that gives me my caseload, and also um, I keep a record of all of my meetings for that year. Um, of course, an individual education plan is all confidential, so nothing that I show it, show you in here is going to have any students' names on it. Um, I've tried to, you know, print new ones, um, blank sheets, so I can show you. Um, so this is the cover sheet. On the back of this, um, I have our school calendar, um, and I find that this is very helpful, um, of course, because all the dates that I need to know as a student, uh, excuse me, as a teacher um, for when grades are due and progress reports and holidays and things of that nature are on here. Um, if you see these little highlighted lines, um, what I do at the beginning of that grading period is go through and I count my weeks because I know how many trials I need for each student for each goal. So I go through and then I try to use my highlighted weeks on here as data weeks. Um, of course, you know, as a special education teacher, I am taking data every single day um, and I'm working with my students on their goals every day. But when it comes to reporting purposes, um, I have a certain amount of trials that I have to get in within each grading period. So I go ahead and do that and that way I have this right in here so when I grab once again this binder everything is there um, and there isn't any questions about you know if I wrote the wrong date or anything of that nature um, then on this side and of course this is just a blank one um, I keep a record of all of my meetings so I write my students name I write whether it's a meeting with our special education committee or if it's just a typical IEP meeting I write down the date that the draft is sent home to the parents or guardians and then I also write down the meeting date um, as far as my caseload I typically have up to 10 students like I said um, so it puts me anywhere from 10 to about 30 IEP meetings per year um, and once again that's based on the students need um, at minimum in the state that I live in we do meet once a year to review um, you know a students progress if you guys are special ed teachers I'm sure you know that you know that's you're typically meeting more than once a year to discuss student progress 
The next thing um, in here that I find very helpful is my portfolio list. So these are going to be all of my students listed in this column, of course their annual review date and their next evaluation date. In the state that I live in, students' eligibility for special education services is reviewed every three years. Um, and since I can get students at the age of two, sometimes I will have them um, at that third year mark. And so I need to make sure that's written down because we do have to go to the special education committee to determine eligibility purposes. So of course dates are the most important thing when it comes to your IEPs. Um, you certainly don't want to go beyond that annual date um, and you want to make sure that you are in compliance for all of your dates. The next thing that I have in here is my birthday list. Um, I do mark this in my planner um, but like I said since some of my students you know, every year do transition to kindergarten. Um, I need to know their current age and then I write down their turning age. So when they're with me, what age are they turning? Um, the state that I live in, if they are turning five, the year that I have them, the following year um, they will be transitioning to kindergarten. So it's just, you know, more documentation and information that I use. Um, clearly not on a daily basis, but definitely on a monthly basis. Um, the next thing I have in here is a communication log, and um, this is just pretty much important information that I need on every one of my students. So, of course, I have basic information, name, address, um, you know, parents' information, what services they need, of course, dates. Um, and then at the bottom here, I have their log. So for me, this is the easiest way to do it. There's tons of, you know, different resources. Um, if you're a special ed teacher or even a gen ed teacher, I think it's really important to write down when you speak and when you communicate with parents or guardians. Um, you certainly don't want to, you know, be brought to the due process case where you have no data to support your documentation of communication with parents. So that's such a, um, you know, it's such a large part of my job is to keep data. Uh, and for me, this is the easiest way Way to do it. So I just write the date, how I contacted them, who I contacted with, and the summary of that um, that communication. As a general rule for myself, I do not give out my personal cell phone number, um, nor do I accept personal cell phone numbers um, as far as a texting basis. Um, I've always been taught that that is not best practice. Um, best practice, of course, is going to be um, in person. You know, if you write a note, you should make a copy of it. Um, email or phone. I personally prefer face to face um, because you know, with emails and notes, people can always um, infer things that you didn't quite mean. So for me, face-to-face -face or telephone contact is the best method. Um, I would highly suggest that if you are a special ed teacher, but once again, if something else works for you, you know, then that's completely up to you. So anyways, I have my communication log in here. I normally go through probably two or three of these sheets um, just because you know you have to remember that since my students are so young um, it's very new to their parents them having a disability um, and you know I do not have a child with a disability but I can um, you know I see and I feel the anxiety and the fear and the questions um, that these parents have and they do have a lot of questions which you know is totally normal um, so I do tend to communicate them a lot more compared to you know a fifth grader that has verbal language to communicate to their parent like what they did at school every day you know um, if they're working on a goal if they're having trouble with it I would say typically 90% um, of my students do not have functional verbal communication skills, which means they can't come home and say, hey mom, you know, I learned about apples today and they're red and yellow and green and they grow on trees. So it's really important for me to communicate with my parents. Um, and, you know, also just to keep in mind that my students are, you know, they're near babies, you know. Um, I feel very lucky that their parents trust me and that they, you know, put them on a special education bus in a car seat and that's how they come to school. Um, so, you know, I'll get off my soapbox, but um, I just want you to keep in mind if you're, you know, a teacher, it's so important, especially with early childhood, just to be communicating with these parents. Okay, so the last thing I just want to show you are, um, I don't know if this is old news or new news, um, but these are just sticky notes that I use. I printed them um, just on our like HP printer that we have in the classroom. 
Um, and this is another way that you can take data. These are just like some samples. So once again, you can just do this in Word um, and then you can just change your font. So one thing that you can do if you do have students who sign, um, I use a lot of sign language in my classroom, letters, numbers, shapes, um, you know, common objects, common words. Um, so you could just print out a student's name. Um, this would just be, you know, the letters for Sarah. This is really great if you use a folder system, so you can just put, you know, who this IP is for, and then you can either check off um, when you've sent these things. Um, the division that I work for, we have to send a IEP draft home to the parents prior to the meeting. We have to send a meeting notice. I personally send home a parent input form because I think it's really important to get input from parents is what they see at home. Um, I have a half day program here, so my students are only with me for three hours of the day. Um, and you know, if you have young kids at home, I'm sure you're thinking three hours, you know, that's a long time when a child is two or three. Um, but when you take out transitioning time, restroom time, and related services time, it really is more like, um, you know, an hour to a two hours so that they are really, you know, getting direct instruction from me. So I want to see, you know, um, what the parents see at home and what their concern are, concerns are. And then we also use Outlook. So um, I have to send a invitation to the IEP team as well. Something else you can do um, is just write down your accommodations for your students' IEPs. Um, this would pro probably be great for older grades. Most of my students all have the same accommodations because um, this classroom is considered a special education classroom. So the amount of accommodations that I personally use for my students would not in any way fit on a sticky note because um, like I said, my students are very involved. Um, you can also use this these to write down students' therapy days um, for you know the three common therapies. Of course, there are other therapies um, such as ABA therapy and things that aren't noted on here. Um, I did this for our letter of the week. Um, I can't remember what this is called, but it's just like a font and word. And for a letter, it gives you like a little image to go with it. Um, and then for this one, I just wanted to show you like you can pretty much, you know, just do anything you want. And then you can just tear these off um, and use them anyway in the classroom. And then I've just got one more I wanted to show you. Um, this is something that I have a lot of, um, and these are diaper alerts, because um, like I said, my students are developmentally delayed, so most of them um, are not potty trained, so we do um, change diapers and pull-ups. Um, this is something else that's great for student information, just a little snapshot um, of, you know, uh, name, date of birth, uh, due dates, whether they ride the bus or their parent pickup. Um, you can also print out just a sticky note that says next week if you want to just jot things down. Um, this would be great for a uh, lesson plan book which I use um, and then I also have to do lesson plans on the computer. And then this is great um, for those communication sheets. Um, like I said, you know, when I communicate with parents, most of my students get a daily communication uh, note home from me to their parent. Um, so if I have an IEP meeting um, that's coming up soon, I'll just send like a little reminder because, you know, everybody gets busy. Um, and IEPs are typically scheduled up to a month in advance. Um, and then you can also use a this week sticker to write down your letter number, book of the day, and then if you have a specific data day. Um, and the last thing that I have here is just medical information. And these are for students who um, typically have, you know, severe health impairments. Um, I have a few students like that now. Um, and this is just good information to have just in case there's an emergency. Um, we have emergency folders, of course, for fire drills and other types of emergencies. But this is great because you can just have this information um, on a sticky note and you can just have it in your emergency bag for when you got to a fire drill, you know, if you don't have... Um, you know, if you don't have access to any type of information because it is left in the building. If you're a special education teacher, thank you so much, um, you know, for, for working with other special ed teachers and gen ed teachers and parents and therapists and everybody else. Um, I can tell you, you know, firsthand, I know how it feels. Um, some years are harder than others, but, um, you know, I just want to say thank you. And if you're a parent of a student or a child with disability, uh, I just want to say, you know, we hear you. Um, I hear you. And, um, 
you know, just let me know if there's anything I can do. Um, if you're a parent and you have any questions about IEPs, um, you know, without giving me any, you know, specifics, um, you know, about your location or anything like that, I can certainly try to help you um, as much as I can. Just let me know, you know, your questions in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.